I'm June Gruber, an Associate Professor of Psychology at the University of Colorado Boulder and Director of this Mental Health Expert Series. We're here today with Dr. Matt Nock, the Edgar Pierce Professor of Psychology, Harvard College Professor and Department Chair in the Department of Psychology at Harvard University, to talk with him about his pioneering work on suicide and other forms of self-harm. So thanks for being here today, Matt. Thanks so much for having me. Great, so can you tell me a little bit about the kind of mental health work you're doing? Yes, so I'm fortunate to work in a research lab at Harvard University where we study primarily why people do things to intentionally harm themselves. So we study suicide and non-suicidal self-injury and our work is aimed at trying to better understand, predict and prevent these behaviors. And how did you go about first getting started in this you know, really important line of work? Um, I got interested when I was a junior in undergraduate uh, at, at Boston U. I did a semester abroad in London. Sorry for the so much detail, but you asked. Uh, and they had us, we took classes and they had us go on these um, sort of practicum placements. And I was placed in a psychiatric um, hospital unit for patients who were violent and self-injurious. And at the time I wanted to be a practicing clinician and, and was really um, taken aback, uh, perplexed, by the extreme self-harm, violence, suicidal behavior that I saw on the unit. And I thought, if I'm gonna work clinically, this is stuff that I really need to understand. So it seems like deep end of the pool kind of stuff. So when I finished my undergraduate training, my thought was, let me learn more about suicide and self-injury. That will help me as a clinician to, to be able to treat everything else, if I can treat the harder stuff. Um, and so I started doing volunteering, doing research on suicide and related behaviors, and just really got, got hooked on the research process, the problem of you know, trying to understand suicide. It's a huge, huge, it's, you know, second leading cause of death for those ages 15 to 35 in the US. So top 10 leading cause of death overall. And it's just really, really poorly understood. So I, I have been um, really focused on trying to advance the science and use science to, to better understand suicide and then take what we learn and translate it for, for clinical purposes. And so from that kind of first practicum experience and thinking about your career trajectory until now, what stands out as some notable frustrations and challenges as well as successes you've savored along the way? There's a lot of challenges to studying suicide in general. And I think you know, the stigma involved makes it difficult and the stigma involved leads to decreased funding. So there's not a lot of funding uh, available for suicide. It's a 10th leading cause of death. But if you look at numbers nine and 11, they have, and uh, keep looking, they have three times as much funding as suicide does, which we think is largely driven by stigma. People don't like talking about it. They don't like focusing on it. And as a result, don't like allocating resources to better understand it. So it continues to have a negative impact. So there's not a lot of, not as much funding for suicide as there is for other, other leading causes of death. Um, the work is, is, is challenging IRB wise, legally. Um, we've done work in schools. Schools don't want us asking their students about suicide. A lot of parents don't want us asking kids about suicide. So just layers of stigma that make it difficult to, to get traction and understand this problem, which I think is not dissimilar to what we saw, you know, decades ago, people wouldn't say the word cancer. They would say the C word or they'd whisper it. And now that, that um, stigma has gone away, we've learned a lot about cancer and how to treat it. Same with HIV AIDS. Unfortunately, this hasn't yet happened with, with suicide. So some of the biggest challenges have just been structural, societal in, in studying it. Um, successes. We haven't had enough. I mean, we haven't had a lot. This is still a big, still a big problem. Um, some that come to mind are, you know, the past few years, our group, other groups have gotten some traction in, in building more accurate predictive models, uh, largely by trying new things that, that are now possible with advances in technology and, and, and digital data capture. So we're doing things like using electronic health records. It used to be that all of our health records that our doctors had on us were, were paper and pencil. Now they're all electronic. So now we're using machine learning methods, statistical learning methods to comb across medical records to try and build more accurate predictive algorithms and having some successes. Rather than just relying on self-report, asking someone, are you thinking about killing yourself? Which a lot of people who are thinking about killing themselves will say no, because they don't want to be stopped. We now have digital tools, behavioral tasks, and other things where we can um, get a more objective read on, on how someone might be thinking about suicide. And using new smartphone um, apps, wearable biosensors, Apple watches, smartwatches, we can get a better sense of, 
um, how suicidal thoughts ebb and flow. We know that they're very episodic. They're not there and then they appear. So if we wait once a week, once a month to check in on someone, that's too infrequent. So we're learning a lot about how suicidal thoughts um, ebb and flow and better at using those data to predict when someone's gonna try and kill themselves. So there are a lot of barriers. We're starting to have more and more successes as we, as we incorporate um, some newer, newly available technology. So I think there's, there's reason for optimism. I mean, and you're mentioning these really pioneering technologies that are helping advance the field and move it forward. So when you look forward and kind of think of the future of the field, what do you see as the most important next steps? Identifying gaps and, and, and bridging them. And we're trying to bridge them with these new technologies because they, and not just find technology and use them because it's cool, use it because it's cool, but suicide, although a leading cause of death is a low base rate behavior. So we need really large samples to be able to predict accurately suicide attempts. And so digital data allow us to get these larger and larger samples uh, where we don't have good temporal granularity in our predictive models. Again, digital means are, are, are filling that gap and we're able to collect lots of data continuously over time on people. We're taking advantage of social media platforms where people are posting um, their thoughts, their feelings, their, their intentions, building models that can identify people who are at risk there. And then across all of these, using these as, a, as an infrastructure for intervention. So sending signals to a person's clinician based on medical record, suggesting that they intervene, sending um, interventions to a person's smartphone, to a social media platform. So I think, I think there's a lot we could take advantage of, not just in suicide research, but in mental health research. There's been huge advances in how we live our lives based on technology. A lot of what we do in mental health, you know, in terms of assessment and treatment looks the same as it did, you know, a thousand years ago, uh, in terms of psycho, in terms of talk therapy and so on. And come in once a week for 50 minutes and see me, we'll talk about things and then come back a week later and not do much in between. It's a little bit of a caricature, but I think, I think there's a lot more that we could uh, take advantage of digitally. And getting ideas from younger people. I think, you know, the, the, the digital natives, the people who have grown up with, it, with these technologies and know how, how they're used, how they're misused, I think younger people are going to be key for, for changing the way we do business and, and mental health research and practice. So the last question I have for you is, what advice might you have for those who might be watching this interview today, maybe students, the general public who are interested in the field and maybe want to get engaged? Uh, get engaged, um, jump right in, work with people who are, are, are um, in your university, in your setting, um, and be creative. Uh, there's, a great, there's a great book by uh, a scientist named E.O. Wilson, um, who's a Harvard researcher, no bias there. It's a, it's a really, really good book called Letters to a Young Scientist. And he talks about how to succeed as a scientist if you want to go into science. Uh, he's got a TED talk. If you don't want to read the book, it's 15 minutes. You can get the main gist of it. Uh, I'll steal one of his key pieces of advice. He said, there's an old uh, military dictum that says to be a good soldier, march toward the sound of the guns. So if you're in the fog of war, this is my interpretation of his statement. You're in, a, you're in a battle and you're you're a soldier, go toward where the fire, where the firepower is, go towards where the guns are, go to the battle. He says, to be a good scientist, do the exact opposite. March away from the sound of the guns. Don't just do what everyone else is doing. Don't don't just do small incremental next steps, some you know, derivative of some theme that someone's doing. Think, identify a problem and think about a novel solution to that problem, not a novel way to, to, to measure that problem or study that problem and push that forward. So I think learn about what's happening, but don't be, don't be shy about being creative and trying something, something new. These are huge problems, mental health problems we're struggling with. And what we've been doing has helped, but it hasn't helped enough. And so we need new people, new ideas, new methods to push things forward. So I'm hopeful that some smart, creative uh, young folks watching this are gonna uh, help make huge advances in, again, understanding, prediction, prevention of, of the mental health problems that, that you and I have been studying for years. Great, thanks so much, Matt, for talking today. Thank you so much for the opportunity.